so much fucked up shit to get into. Welcome back to Little Stinkers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey here with my dear friend and new dad, John Del Calo. I'm back, baby. Welcome back, John. Thanks for having me. Jacob from Matera, Jeff Simmons. John, you have that glow about you. Do I? Yeah. Is that nitrous or is that fatherhood? (laughs) That's leftover nitrous, baby. I'm still (laughs) feeling that last balloon from the fucking (laughs) K-Lot. It was a good one. That was one for the books. Can't wait to talk about it. We're going to have a... uh, a little breakdown of our concert experience. Oh, oh wow. I can't wait for that. But uh, hey, listen, Jake and I wanted to do something special for you because, I mean, fatherhood, it's a rare club, for one. And two, uh, you know how people get birthday punches? Oh, God. No, I never heard of that. <laughs> well, I wanted, Jake and I put our brains together and we created something called fatherhood punches. So for birthday punches, you get one for every year, every age that you're, you've turned. Uh, for fatherhood punches, I was thinking we could do one punch for every day that a typical baby is in his mommy's belly. So we're each going to punch you <laughs> 270 times to welcome you into the club. Is that math right? Let me do that real quick. <laughs> so are you ready for your punches? Yeah. All, All right. right. Yeah, you guys made it up, so I got to take it. Congratulations, John. Thank you for committing to the bit. That was something else, man. Jake tore his shirt. (laughs) (laughs) A Hulkamania, bro. I think you might have tore it. You punched him a number of times. I think I tore my ACL. <laughs> Thanks for taking some of them hey, for me. You got it. Man, I'm happy for you, buddy. Welcome Thanks. back, man. Thanks for being out of breath after that. <laughs> that was aerobic. Good for you. Yeah, feel good, And you man. did find one spot in my shoulder that you kind of oh, no. didn't hold back on for a while. Brother, I mean, I know you eat a lot of Taco Bell and Arby's, but you're pretty solid. Oh, thanks. I never felt your body. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope it's not the last time. <laughs> Oh, man. We had uh, our dear friend Jimmy Gillespie uh, taking your spot. I saw the couch wrote me a fucking help me letter. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. We were putting a hurting on this thing pretty bad. I I heard it was a a good time. We had fun, man. That's great. But I'm happy to see you, buddy. I'm happy to see you guys. Yeah, man. This is I I always feel I feel so much safer in my home when you and Jake are here. <laughs> <laughs> so just know that you guys have that effect on me. Wow. That's great to know. All right. John, um, we didn't even flip the coin in your absence, so Thank that you. coin hasn't been touched in weeks. Thank you for respecting my wishes what in my absence. <laughs> So if you want to go ahead and flip that coin, we can decide whether or not we're going to have a Stinkers episode or an Impractical Jokers episode. All right, let's bring it to the forefront so the people can see the unveiling. All right. Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> All right, man, I tell you what. In the hospital, when there's not new submarine coverage, <laughs> Impractical Jokers is the thing to watch. Uh, so you know they were on my mind the whole time. Bah! Not this time. Oh, I thought this was going to be a week, man. man you got all that good juju on your side. Yeah, no. <laughs> Maybe like next it. time. Good juju. <laughs> this guy, uh, he, he's been a snigger through and through. Now, we've relied heavily upon murderers. Yeah. And this guy, uh, yeah, he's a murderer. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had to see you look up and to yeah. the right to figure out if a guy did a murder or not. So there were two deaths that he's responsible for. Okay. And I get the one is definitely self-defense. The second one, it was definitely uh, 
he was the aggressor and uh, he caused a man's death. So is this okay. the tiger from Sig- uh, Sigmund and Feroy? <laughs> <laughs> Sigmund and Feroy. Yes. They're on the North Strip, way north. <laughs> yeah, it's tigers that want to fuck their mothers. Yes. <laughs> But no, Jake, this isn't Sigmund Freud. Uh, yeah, okay. Sigmund and Freud, uh, gay psychologist, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, boxing promoter Don King. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, definitely a stinker. Yeah, he was definitely a bad boy. Whoa, uh, he killed somebody in self-defense before? Yeah, dude, he killed a guy in self-defense, and another guy owed him money, so he beat him to death. Whoa. It was the first instance when he was already a famous promoter? No. That was, like, his youth? Yep. Sorry to skip ahead. I no, just... it was, uh, yeah, he was mid-20s, and then... The second killing happened, I think, 13 years later. Okay. Damn. But, yeah, it, it all stems with him being a wild dude who just liked to live life on the edge and doing bad boy stuff. And then he went on, uh, he did his time, and he got into the uh, boxing promotion game, which he had a very successful run. Now he's not doing so well in boxing promotion, but oh, he is no. 91 years old. Jesus Christ. He's still kicking, man. Damn. Still funny as ever, but... Yeah, I think. you think his alarm clock's just a boxing referee going one, <laughs> two, <laughs> three, and they go all the way to news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I learned a lot about Don King in the in the past week, and uh, he's definitely a colorful character. He's pissed off essentially anybody that he's ever come across. However, a lot of people that he's he's deeply affected their lives in a negative way, but it still seems like they don't hate him somehow. He's got like a redeeming, can't stay mad at that guy kind of a thing. Yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know that he's likable, but at the same time, it's like, for instance, like he stole probably $100 million from Mike Tyson, Whoa. and Mike Tyson still talks to him. Jesus Christ. Now, Mike Tyson did beat his ass twice. <laughs> <laughs> 50000 each time, I guess. <laughs> if you got money like that, that's how it feels. So 50000 to 50000 equals $100 million? Wow, that is a lot of money. Jake, why don't you give him the helmet? Here you go, John. Oh, my God. Why do you well, keep buckling it? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's coming to me sooner it's or comforting. later. It's comforting to come buckle it, you know? Wow, five minutes in, John's already got the dunce cap back on. <laughs> I'm back, baby. <laughs> but yeah, Donald King was born August 20th, 1931, in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. Have you guys ever been to Cleveland? No. I have not. Might have driven through it, but did not stop. It's my kind of town. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard you say that before about like other notably shitty towns, and what is your fascination with it? I, th- I think I'm just a Rust Belt man. <laughs> it's in your bones. <laughs> you got rust in your blood. Yeah, I need tetanus, baby. <laughs> if anybody's got a tetanus hookup, let me know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I just love, um, I find beauty in, uh, I guess, uh, fucked up places, which Damn. I guess would explain uh, the places that I like to visit and also yeah. all the ladies that I subscribe to on OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can find beauty anywhere. You, you, Jake, you pull your cheeks apart right oh. now. I'll find beauty in that thing. You'll find God if you, if you, pull, <laughs> if you pull those things apart. But yeah, I do love Cleveland. I had the uh, pleasure of going back there last year. I hadn't been there in a while. I went in maybe 2003, four ish and it's much different now. What did you go back then for? Uh, Eagles, Browns. Damn. I think it was 2004. Maybe, yeah, the Super Bowl year, I think they played them. Dedicated fan. Yeah, it was was great, man. Wow. Man, yeah. There was nothing going on then. I went to Cleveland then, and there was absolutely nothing. Like, we walked around the city, and we saw the same homeless guy twice in separate parts of the city, (laughs) and we were all excited to see one another. He was like, I've been looking for y'all. Even he doesn't see a lot of people. Yeah. God damn. But now it's totally different. The place is popping. Hilarity's wow. Cleveland is one of the nicest clubs I've ever been to. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's the basement of Hilarity's is what I would design this house to look like if I won a massive Dorito settlement and also got back into cocaine. <laughs> so it's my kind of place. But yeah, he was born in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, Jake. Okay. Went to John Adams High School. He was a bad boy in high school. He ended up getting kicked out his senior year for lateness, for... Um, what do they call it when you don't go to school? Truancy. Truancy, Truancy yeah. Truancy. And, uh, <laughs> and general bad behavior. Okay. Generally misbehaving. Didn't, <laughs> didn't you say that if you were a stripper, that would be your name, misbehaving? <laughs> no, Jimmy, Jimmy said that Gillespie? was going to be his okay. drag name. <laughs> that was his drag name. But he got expelled from school, and he had wanted to go to college, but he gets expelled from high school. 
So he's like, fuck it, man. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to put my brain to use. Like, he is, by all accounts, a fucking genius. He's got a photographic memory. Anytime you see him, he's always, like, quoting some kind of philosopher. He loves quoting Shakespeare. Yeah. He, he remembers anything and everything about contracts. He could recite lines of contracts that specific people have signed. Whoa. Back to them and just let them know. He would, I mean, a lot of cases, like, he would be lying to the people in regards to, like, what they signed. Yeah. But at the same time, like, he, if they looked at the contracts, you would see something relative to what he was talking about. Yeah, he's got the genius haircut. <laughs> you know that's the yeah the Einstein yeah. he's got yeah I was going to say Al- Albert Einstein and I was like is it Alfred I don't Jesus. I don't know yeah <laughs> God <laughs> damn it yeah helmet back over here <laughs> just doesn't look as nice on Mike <laughs> I'm actually thinking to get a tattoo right across here it says dunce <laughs> now that I'm balding it's really going to be prominent just have it fill in the hairline <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to figure out something to do with this time. So he's like, fuck it, I'm going to make some money. So he gets into the numbers racket. Are you guys familiar with the numbers racket? Is this like bookkeeping? Kind of. It's like a ghetto lottery. I was going to say lottery, yeah. I have no idea about it. He did run other forms of gambling. But Is that like they would be outside on like, with like a TV tray with a bunch of like tickets and shit kind of stuff? No, basically he would go around to bars and places where people would hang out in, uh, in mostly downtrodden areas. And he would just... It's essentially just like a black market lottery. And the way they would do it, it's different city by city. Uh, I found that uh, in some places they call it the Italian lottery, which puts a smile on my face every time (laughs) I think about it. (laughs) So I think that is something that happened in my neighborhood. In Wilmington? Yeah. Whoa. With all the Italian old people. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, somebody came around and did something. Not a lot of people were doing it, but like uh, one on every block. Yeah. Yeah. That, That makes sense, man. And you know how uh, Pennsylvania has Gus the Groundhog and tells people to keep on scratching? Yeah. In the Italian lotto, lotto you got to keep on stirring. <laughs> I missed you so much. <laughs> <laughs> this must be what it feels like uh, when a loved one comes back from the dead. Two weeks away. Yeah. And I came back from the Grateful Dead. There was, like, I, remember, <laughs> yeah. I felt this way. Uh, last year when Jake went away on vacation, like, I missed him so much. And then he went to Alaska. I thought about getting a flight out there to surprise him. <laughs> Dude, so, I would have loved it if you guys showed one up in day Alaska. In Alaska. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Three days of travel for one day of bit. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Don't ever leave me. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he's he's running a numbers racket. He's running different forms of illegal gambling. But uh, the numbers racket was the most intriguing. And depending upon what city they do the numbers in, um, the way that they decided is different. So in Cleveland, it was relative to um, where the stock market closed. It was gains, losses, and some other number. And they took one number out of those. It would be like the middle number out of like whatever the gains were, the middle number out of whatever the losses were. So in the evening edition of the paper... People would look at that, and that That's would tell you what you the knew. number was, it was like whether or not hitting whoa. code almost. Yeah, it's it's like it, it's way too elaborate for my fucking retard. Yeah, brain. only people in the know would. Right. Yeah. 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 That's it, crazy. it. Would take at least four hours to explain this to me. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> the middle number? Right. They're like, no. All right, I'll just give you three dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do what There's you want with take, it. Take your money back. So that's just like an example of what one city would. Yeah. How they would do other it. cities would do. Um, like results relative to like uh, the racetrack in that area. Gotcha. Like whatever their take for the day was. So they're basically just keeping the money in house. Yeah. As opposed to taking it to a racetrack yes. or okay. casino or something. Yeah. And if you hit in the uh, Italian lottery, you would win 600 bucks. Whereas with a typical state run lottery, I think that's 50 50. Okay. So the state okay. will, will put 50 in the pot for people to split evenly amongst winners and then keep 50 for themselves. Who's like the house, though? Like, say if like four people hit with those numbers, like who's paying it out? Whoever you place the bet with. Okay. And Don King, he would do this all by memory. He wouldn't write anything down. Jesus Christ. So if he couldn't even do that as a fucking server at a restaurant. Dude, it's <laughs> fucking nuts. And also to that point, that drives me fucking insane. When, when people don't, don't write, write it down. down. Don King's taking your bets. His hands are behind his back. Hold up. <laughs> very nice. Yes. Yes. Very nice. <laughs> you need a pen? No, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, this. Yeah, this lotto winner is actually well done. I don't want it to be. <laughs> Man, that shit drives me fucking insane. Who are you impressing? Yeah, I, I yeah I don't even like it. Like I would write down a fucking soda refill mm-hmm. a I, lot of times. I think it's a, a move to impress the the women you're with, show them that they they listen. 
That's interesting. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, they're like, hey, I'll listen to anything you got to say. Oh, like the lady at the table. He's trying yeah. to hit on them subtly exactly. by, by saying, yeah, I'll remember this. Mm -hmm. Your husband doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even remember what he ordered. <laughs> That's all right, honey. Keep going. I got a long memory. <laughs> I can go all night long. Go ahead, keep them coming. How many Pepsis you want? You want a code red on top of that? Yeah. We make a nice fried galamad. <laughs> I'm going to forget this basket yeah. of bread. <laughs> uh, before I move on, I want to ask you, uh, how badly would you feel if you fucked up an order when you were waiting? Um, if the people were nice and it was like something I did, I mm. would f feel bad for... 30 minutes until they mm -hmm. left or whatever. Would you ever walk to the table crying to show you how <laughs> sorry you were? <laughs> I would, yeah. I would say it was, I was crying, but they all knew. It was just sweat dripping over my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> would you ever do the thing where you, where you busted it down and put your elbows on the table? <laughs> Fuck no, dude. I didn't even tell him my name. I didn't do any of that corny shit. Did you shit. do that thing where that you sit at the open seat at the table? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Slide into the booth yeah. next to somebody. Hey guys, how are we doing tonight? Like, no, I fuck? would like, I would get mad if people were sitting on the same side with each other. Mm. <laughs> like a, that a, is odd. A you table for them? four yeah. or a table for two and then they like take the chair around to the other side so they're like canoodling yeah. at the table. Like you have to do this in fucking public. That's You're making awesome. everybody fucking sick. Mm. <laughs> Cut it out. That is very odd. Yeah. You would make a great waiter, Jake. Uh, I was a bus boy. I could barely handle that. <laughs> Look at that. that this, <laughs> I actually got this helmet from the the job that I had. From the bus. From the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was cleaning up styrofoam platters on septum. <laughs> I, was, I was taking people's plates after like one bite. Just like, no, they're like, I'm not done with that. I'm like, yes, you are. Yes. I'll the, take it. The bus dunce ate another whole Branzino <laughs> off of someone's table today. <laughs> <laughs> Whose nephew is he again? Yeah. <laughs> and does anyone know why we keep losing boxes of butter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Don came to make most of his money in illegal numbers, but he also would run an illegal gambling house. And in 1954, a couple of guys attempted to rob him at his own gambling house. Attempted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They Hell didn't get yeah. away with that shit. Yeah, you oh, think shit. he's fucking got that much money in there and doesn't have the guns to back it up? He chased him out of there, and the one guy he shot in the back and killed him. Whoa. That's the self-defense one we're yep, talking about? that's the self-defense one. Shot him in the back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, was a, it was a man that was doing a, it was, uh, doing a, a twirl <laughs> as he was about to shoot him. Gotcha. Okay. That's... But he got away with it, and uh, this man was named Hillary Brown. The man he killed? <laughs> yeah. Damn. Debatable. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard Hillary as a man's name ever in my life. Yeah, either way, lock oh. him up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a rough man's name. Yeah. It's like, that's got to feel awful. Like, you're in an illegal gambling house, you're shot in the back, you know you're on your way out, and you're like, can you just tell them? That my name was Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He definitely went by a nickname, a yeah. street name. Yeah, it's had that was only his obituary name. Yeah, when that came out, they just continued to clown him even harder. To that point, uh, you want to take a guess as to what Don King's street name was? Uh, like what he went by? He's a, he's a small fellow, right? No, he's big. He's six three. Is he really? Yeah. Damn. I guess for a while else. he he was pretty pretty heavy too. Okay. Um. Big Big Don King. Fuck, that was just his name with big in front of it. Gamble Guts. That's a great nickname, Jake. <laughs> that just seemed like apt, you know? I, I like that. You should coin that because that's 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 the feeling I get when I walk into Harris Chester. Do you get this feeling I like... I got, the, I got the Gamble Guts. <laughs> I just came for a cheesesteak, but now I got the Gamble Guts. <laughs> when you walk into a casino, do you feel yourself power walking? <laughs> Um, no, I feel like I start to slow down and, yeah. and look at all the lights. Yeah, really? I'm immediately like, oh, what do I want to? Yeah, oh. yeah. I kind of like get stopped in my tracks like a deer in headlights mm -hmm. when I walk in. I feel like I'm like, okay, unless I'm with people that like know where they're going. If I'm just going in, I feel like I'm like immediately. Oh, that's interesting. What's cool looking. Yeah, where, do you, where do you power walk to? Just like through the entire thing. Dude, out the other as side? soon as I smell the place and as soon as I hear it, I just, my, <laughs> my legs take off. Damn. I feel like I'm being carried by angels in the outfield to lose $300. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's my limit usually. <laughs> Two fifty, three hundred. I'm not losing any more than that. Yeah. Um, I can't afford it. I know, dude. I'm with you. Um, I would say I go to a casino maybe twice a year, and these days a hundred bucks. Yeah. The last time I went, fuck, I don't remember. It may be last summer, actually. I don't think I went other than when I went to Vegas this year. But one day I woke up, I was feeling my degenerate streak, yeah. which I often confuse with luck. <laughs> and I was like, all right, Harris Chester, like I could be there in seven minutes. Damn. And uh, so I woke Clearly up. he has timed himself. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up. As soon as I woke up, I put on my shoes. I was like, I'm feeling lucky today. I drove to Harris Chester. I put 100 bucks in the slot machine. Within like three minutes, I lost it all. Damn, dude. Oh, my God. But. I'm but that was it. Is that like five dollars a pool? I don't remember, but it was one of like the higher yeah. for me higher limit. Like yeah. there are ones where you could put like a hundred bucks a spread. Right. It's almost exact, exact distance. It, it says eight, eight minutes. Eight minutes. Damn. Yeah, he can, but he but he's can get there in seven. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say he stopped at red lights <laughs> or Lou Turks. <laughs> Yeah, he shot the guy in his gambling house. Got away Wait, with you didn't it. tell us his nickname. Oh, uh, Donald the Kid. Damn. That's I like that. Cool. Yeah, it's good. Especially when you kill a guy. Yeah. <laughs> Got a little yeah. cred to you. Donald the Kid. Mm-hmm. That's Strikes pretty- again. Yeah, he used, to, he used to keep a gun on him, and uh, he, he was always against having security because he felt it made him look like a gangster. So he never had official security. Whoa. He was the only guy in there defending his fucking gambling he, house. He had that thing on him. Fucking and he always man. carried a huge amount of cash. That's a bad... Bad boy. He's yeah, a wild real. dude, man. Yeah. yeah, I mean. That's crazy. If it wasn't for him ripping everybody who he ever met off, he could be possibly a very likable figure for a degenerate <laughs> like me. Yeah. So he continues to run numbers, and uh, the first killing happened in 1954. In 1966, in Cleveland, this is all happening in Cleveland, he's got a dispute with a guy named Sam Garrett. So the dispute is over $600. Don wants his money. And uh, they're in a bar when they're arguing about it, and they take it outside, and Don just starts beating this guy, Sam Garrett's ass. So he's hitting him with fists. He's kicking him. He's pistol-whipping him. And a crowd is gathered around now, and two detectives from the Cleveland Police Department happen to be driving past. So they drive past, and the guy's still alive as Don King's beating him. But as they pull up, they break it up, but unfortunately, it's too late. Apparently, the guy's last words were, Don, I'll pay you. Jesus Christ. He ended up beating him to fucking yeah, death. The guy died five days later. Oh, my God. And so he did have to go to jail for that? For a little while. All right. So his last words, I'll pay you the money, Don. So he goes to jail. He goes on trial. He argues that it's self-defense, even though he's pistol whipping a guy. Yeah. <laughs> Over fucking gambling debt. Yeah. And he's charged with second degree murder, Jake. God that's insane. He's facing life in prison if he's convicted of second degree, degree that's, murder. That's what he should be charged with. Yeah. It, it's fair. But, yeah. yeah. It's like, you can't just... I mean... Th- yeah, a guy owes you 600 bucks, though. Money, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> you gotta give him a little taste of the one, too. Maybe a <laughs> break a finger or something. Yeah, Donnie the Kid, man. How many, how many, uh, how many warnings did he give him, you That's know? a good point. I don't know. Yeah. Now, I'm, if there had I'm, been previous I'm hoping warnings, that was not... Number one, knock at the door. Hey, where's my money? Come and knock on our door. <laughs> We've been waiting for you. You think you'd be you this? and the EMT and the Doctor <laughs> Three's company too? <laughs> You're both going to be thrown over couches. God, I mean, I think it's a little harsh. The murder too. <laughs> <laughs> the charge. I mean, it was, he wasn't trying to kill him, right? Yeah, I, but that's what second degree murder is. Yeah, but it's not you're premeditated. Right. What's third degree? Hmm. Yeah, what is third degree? I don't know. And I'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe, hmm, I would just be guessing here. All right, first degree premeditated. Second yeah. degree, maybe you, you act in a way where, like, you know that you could cause a person's death. Yeah. And there's some factors which contribute to... There's a lead up to it, maybe, and maybe third degree is like you're minding your business, but then you just go nuclear on somebody. Whoa! Yeah, I bet you it says nuclear. In the <laughs> in Jake, the pass law. me that helmet, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I like how I reacted so sincerely. I'm like, wow, that's, that's it. 
All right, I mean, let's see. What does that Johnny say, Johnny Jeff? The kid, though. So this homicide, this homicide okay. the, the deliberately planned or part of the process of committing a felony are classified as murder in the third degree. Okay, so it's like if you rob but, a bank and kill someone. But if it's thing? deliberately planned, isn't that premeditated? No, it says it's if it's second, uh, third degree. It says third degree slash manslaughter. So okay. Third degree basically is manslaughter. First degree murder is when they're... Okay. Second degree murder is still murder. Oh, yeah. I guess that could have technically been manslaughter. Because he didn't set out Go to kill him. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Kill him, yeah. Because Donnie the Kid, that's what you got to... You, you get up and be like, yeah, I'm Donnie, Donnie the Kid, <laughs> but I don't play. You know? You got to send a message. Did you just pull a string in your back? <laughs> <laughs> There's a snake in my boot. <laughs> I'm Donnie the Kid. I don't play. <laughs> That's what I would say. <laughs> so I don't get in fights at bars. Don King goes on trial for second degree murder. <laughs> and fortunately for him, he's got a corrupt judge on this case. This guy named Judge Corrigan. Fortunately for him. Fortunately for him. Now, this guy has been reported as part of a, a, uh, a weekly intel report that was given to J. Edgar Hoover, the FBI director. Whoa. So local chapters of the FBI would all send in their weekly reports of like local scumbags who they thought were committing federal crimes and they would send it to Jagger Hoover who would compile this massive file on people and Judge Cargan was a guy that had a file just because people knew he was on the take damn the jury comes back they convict Don King of second degree murder now he's facing a life sentence at this point however wow before they even leave court Judge Cargan arranges for Don King and his lawyer to meet in his chambers the prosecutors aren't involved in this at all when they emerge from the uh, chambers, Don King's sentence has now been downgraded to manslaughter. So he went from a second-degree murder conviction to manslaughter. So instead of facing life, he's now facing roughly four years. And nobody knows how much what? money nobody was knows. talked about. Nope. Oh, my God. Nope. And nobody, nobody knows like how, like how nobody else knew that this was going to happen. But it's somehow, Don King and his lawyer were able to sneak back to the, uh, the judge's chambers. They worked out a deal. And the judge used some kind of language because initially, I think before the trial started, they had to decide whether it was going to be a jury trial or whether the judge was actually going to decide his yeah. fate. And it was clearly people were there on the jury. The jury decided. But then the judge was like, oh, no, we ended up deciding that this was going to be the case where I would decide. And I'm deciding that he's convicted of manslaughter. Wow. I guess that speaks to the widespread corruption in the city. Yeah. That they just went along with it because Don King ended up doing three years and 11 months in prison. And shortly after that, the judge started boxing lessons, right? <laughs> well, dude, the judge, the judge ended up running for uh, the Court of Appeals. And it's an elected position. Yeah. So when he was running for Court of Appeals, one of the people who campaigned on his behalf was Muhammad Ali, who became a friend of Don King. So Don King, while he was in jail, all right, three people, three people met him on the day that he was released from jail. A guy named uh, fucking Lloyd Price, who was a dear friend of Don King's and was a singer. The guy, Lloyd Price, um, he's really? the guy that discover, discovered Little Richard. Okay. So he's a singer. He's a music producer. So, yeah. so he's, he's steeped in that game pretty, pretty deeply. Also, there's a guy named Don Elbaum, who's a boxing promoter, who ends up getting Don King's foot in the door. And then the third guy that met him the day that he was released from prison was Muhammad Ali. That's crazy. Damn. Yeah. And this was like he was, uh, this is before his diagnosis and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. like he was regular Muhammad Ali. Yeah, this is before his career, right? No, Muhammad Ali, like he, he was, was already, he was already a pretty big name. Okay. Yeah, that's what's this, so crazy. It's like was, Justin Bieber showing up to get me out of <laughs> a night in jail. <laughs> but Don King, he's able to make all these connections through all these different uh, underworld figures that he knows. That's crazy. And well, they lead, before, when, before he went to jail, he was not like a millionaire yet, right? He could have been. However, all throughout his life, he was somehow connected to the mafia. Okay. And naturally, that's going to lead to connections in the entertainment industry. The Italian lottery. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look at that. The Italian NBA, the Italian lottery. <laughs> <laughs> Italian professional boxing. <laughs> one husband, one wife under the ring. <laughs> one, one plate of spaghetti got cold. <laughs> <laughs> Touch tongues. Let's get it on. Yeah. <laughs> you guys will stop fighting at the ding of the microwave. 
Don King gets out of jail in 1972. And at this point, he's already got he's already got his mind made up. Now, while he's in there, he's just fucking tearing through books. Anything that he could get his hands on, he's reading. So he's really building himself up while he's in there. He hits the ground running in 1972, not only through his connections, but because he has a very well-thought-out plan in regards to what he wants to do with his life. He wants to be a boxing promoter. So he's like, all right, how can I do this on the biggest scale with my limited resources? So he's like, all right, I'm going to... Um, he hears about a hospital in Cleveland called Forest City Hospital. Yeah. Which is a black hospital that's really struggling financially. Jake. That's sad. They I know it is. need the resources. They do. They're struggling financially. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not... I'm just... Listen. You're just looking normal? Yeah. You're not making faces face. behind That's, me? What are you mouthing to me? <laughs> I'm not mouthing anything. He, he mouthed the words, <laughs> fat white girls drive the ambulances <laughs> to the black hospital. <laughs> Jake, I mean. <laughs> You're good at reading lips. I know. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So he's trying. So Don King uses this struggling black hospital as the basis for him to play on people's pity to get them to buy tickets to this event that he's putting on where he's going to have Muhammad Ali fight. Yeah. So Muhammad Ali, like there's footage of this and like, he, he's a, he's a really good showman, obviously, but um, he gets in the ring. He mixes it up with like some local fucking loser and he puts on a show, but also it's combined with an R and B concert. So yes. there are fights in R and B Marvin Gaye and, uh, and Lou Rawls actually sing at this it's, concert. This is, Falling perfectly into plan. I love this. <laughs> yeah. In my head, I'm, I'm cool. designing a black hospital as we speak. And instead of the blue cross, it's Prince's logo. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there was a, a book that I read for this called Only in America. And the funniest thing in the book was this one story <clears throat> about how Don King was trying to sell tickets to this fucking event. And he was calling in local black leaders. Like, that's one thing that he did. He always played on the um, allegiances of black people to say it's us, it's us against them. Are you with me or not? Like the white people are trying to fucking get in our pockets. They're trying to take everything we have from us. Reverse helter skelter. It is. That's a great way to put it's it. A- <clears throat> so this story is recounted by the uh, the boxing promoter that I mentioned, Don Elbaum. Yeah, I wish I didn't say that out loud into a microphone <laughs> where people listen. <laughs> but Don Elbaum says like they set up shop in this suite at uh, the Sheridan in Cleveland, uh-huh. and Don King through all every day he's just having. Different business leaders, different church leaders, different community leaders in Cleveland come through, and he's attempting to sell them blocks of tickets, which they can then take back to their businesses, their communities, or their churches to sell to their congregants, their community members, whatever. Classic bringer show. Yes, um, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he is an excellent salesman. And Don Elbaum says, in this one particular instance, Don King invited this, this old black couple who were prominent members of a local black church and he gave them the spiel of it's, it's us against the white people. They're, they've taken everything from us. He's, he, he tells these people, the only thing that we have to ourselves is the word motherfucker. That's the only thing that we have to ourselves. That's, no, it's not. Had he never heard white people say that before? Buddy, it works. <laughs> so he's got these two old black church people in his suite. And Don Elbaum says, like, they're the, they're the sweetest people on earth. It's, it's clear that the church is all they fucking give a fuck about. But Don King is screaming at them that the only thing that they have is the word motherfucker. And he says, by the end of his spiel, Don Elbaum's working in the next room. And he says, at a certain point, not only is Don screaming the word motherfucker, but he's got these two old black churchgoers screaming motherfucker (laughs) as well. Oh, my God. And he was able to sell them a block of tickets, which they then took and sold back to their congregation. And I think there were... 8,500 people Holy capacity shit. capacity in this arena that they used, and they sold the fucking place out. Get Jesus out. Christ. I was wow. thinking like 300 people maximum. Dude, 8,000. Awesome. I mean, they had massive names. They had Muhammad Ali, and they had Marvin Gaye performing. True, yeah. It shouldn't have been hard, but what but year are we talking? This is 1972. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. It gets even better. So they raise over $80,000. How much do you think goes to the black hospital? <laughs> Zero? 1500 bucks. Shut up. No way. <laughs> he gives Muhammad Ali 10K. He gives the church. I'm sorry. He gives the, the hospital 1500 Uh I forget what he gave Marvin Gaye, but he ends up pocketing more than half for himself. Oh, my God. I mean, technically, anything is a benefit, right? Yeah, true. Yeah, you don't one really, dollar, you don't decla- two of them. Yeah, and I think in a standard boxing contract, uh, 
promoters or managers can charge up to um, 33% of the take. However, this is not a sanctioned situation. It could have been, man, okay. because he had pretty heavy influence in the city. He eventually got a pardon for his conviction from the governor. God damn. So, I mean, he was pretty I mean, well connected. Governor wanted tickets, you know? The governor <laughs> wanted to be ringside. This is actually kind of funny, too, but he actually <coughs> got a letter of recommendation from the former owner of the Cleveland Browns, Art Modell. Really? Yeah, so he had Cleveland under his little thumb. Damn. Good for him. Yeah, the he Original did. LeBron. <laughs> Now this this was a massive success. So now like he's he's a name in the fight game. And he's he's got the the yeah. biggest in of all, which is Muhammad Ali. And, and he's doing pretty good for <clears throat> concerts too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he ends up becoming the promoter for Michael Jackson's nineteen eighty four world tour. Whoa. And some people say that he might be who was responsible for the permanent rift between Michael Jackson and the rest of the Jackson five. Damn. It's us against the <laughs> Michael Jackson just screaming motherfucker in his little sweet voice. He's even got bubbles of chimp screaming it. That's, that's actually what Shamon means. <laughs> <laughs> but that the the Black Hospital fight happened in nineteen seventy two. What do you think happens in nineteen seventy four? Oh, I hope they got their money. No, the they hospital. didn't. No. Oh. Jake, he organizes uh, They gave they got fifteen hundred dollars, Jake. Did I, you I not hear they, got, they got their money. Don King <laughs> Ends up promoting one of the biggest fights in history, which was the Rumble in the I Jungle. Was say, yeah. Which was Muhammad Ali versus George Foreman. Wow. And that is not the thriller in Manila. No, that's um Joe Frazier, right? Joe Frazier. That's okay. the third Joe Frazier fight. This is Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. George Foreman. Okay. And they only fought once. I, I know I don't know very much about boxing. I followed boxing for a bit in the Tyson era just because he was so electric. Mm -hmm. But um this fight happened in nineteen seventy four and it happened in Zaire. And this guy's a little snicker, too. Uh, the dictator, uh, Mobutu was his name. He invited them to come have the fight over there. And he later said that um, one of the ways that they could have, that they were able to make war in Africa, able to make money in Africa, was to start a war. He's like, but boxing is so much cheaper. So he funded the $10 million that was necessary to bring this fight over to Zaire. Damn. And... By starting a war? No, no, no. Oh, he was just you. comparing the two. Oh, He's like, okay. we could start a war and make money. Yeah. yeah. Or we could just have massive boxing fights over yeah. here. $10 million production in 1972. Dude. God damn. That's, and, yeah, that's huge. Is that the fight that everyone complained about the ropes being too loose? I don't know. Because like, that's when he was doing like a lot of like the rope-a-dope stuff, but the ropes were like so loose, he was able to get away from Foreman. Oh, okay, I don't or, know. Yeah. Is that the right fight I'm thinking of? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but this dude... Um, <laughs> The dictator, Mobutu, he's a funny guy. He's got, do you know what a piss cap is? It's like those little little army hats that they wear, the little triangular okay. things. Yeah. That's uh, its name? Its real name is piss cap? Yeah, well, that's what uh, servicemen like me call it, Jake. But uh, he, Mobutu. Is that what you, you started drinking your piss out of when you were in the army? <laughs> you guys tried this yet? <laughs> maybe it's the hat or maybe it's my piss. I don't know. <laughs> But this really made me laugh about Mobutu. Mobutu uh, wore a leopard piss cap. And he he mandated that he was the only one in Zaire <laughs> that could wear a leopard piss cap. Damn, nobody, nobody else in the country <laughs> could wear a leather hat or leopard hat. If you got caught wearing one, what did they do? <laughs> yeah, that's, dude, could you imagine having that much power over your trademark? Dude, that would <laughs> rule. Dude, there was a news program in Zaire that, where the intro had to include Mobutu. And they arranged it so that it, it had an image of Mobutu being raised, or I'm sorry, descending from the heavens before they could start the actual news broadcast. That's awesome. I love showmanship. Dude, I do too, man. Yeah. Dude, yeah. African warlords. I think I'm going to try to be one. I think I was born to be one. <laughs> I was just born in the wrong time, the wrong country, the wrong skin. <laughs> I love everything else. The like, right helmet. <laughs> everything else about me is African warlord. George Foreman goes over there, and uh, the people immediately take to Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. uh, George Foreman gets off on the wrong foot because he steps off the plane with his German shepherds. Oh, they don't like... No. And um, something funny actually happens with the German shepherds. During, um, it's either during the weigh-in or during one of the press conferences in Zaire. One of Ali's people uh, attempts to steal the dogs, and they get away with it for a little bit before George Foreman picks up on it. 
So he cannot <laughs> wait to get the fuck out of Zaire. And yeah. Muhammad Ali ends up winning that fight. And um, you might have seen footage of this, but that's that's where like the people are following him around as he's training, singing Ali, boom, my yay, Ali, meaning Ali, oh, yeah, kill yeah. him. Uh-huh. That's that's from that fight. Yeah. I had no idea. Actually, I texted Butterly this week. I said he should make a video of him running through Kensington with a bunch of retards screaming, Butterly, boom, my yay, Butterly, boom, my yay. <laughs> That'll be pretty dangerous. <laughs> So it's another massive victory for Don King. And in 19, I think, so that was 1974. And following those are the Ali Frazier fights. And there were three of those, which included the Thrill in Manila, which I believe was the third of, of those fights. Okay. And during the time, like, he, he's making money hand over fist. And he's ripping off every fucking fighter that he's ever come across. And he even rips Muhammad Ali off, who was in his corner from day one. Yeah. And in 1982, Muhammad Ali's health is starting to fail. And he's in a hospital in Los Angeles, and fucking Don King still owes him one point two million dollars from his fights with uh, Frazier. Wow! And he's suing him, and Don King's like, "I'm not giving him the fucking money." But when Don King finds out that Muhammad Ali is fucked up and in the hospital and clearly in bad shape, he hires a lawyer who was a mutual friend between he and and, and uh, Muhammad Ali, and this guy uh, Shabazz, and he sends him to the hospital with a briefcase with fifty thousand dollars in it. In a contract and he's like don't leave the hospital until he signs this fucking contract so he owes him 1.2 million dollars and this uh, lawyer shabazz goes to muhammad ali and he says look the best he's going to do is fifty thousand, and you got to sign this contract which means you're going to drop the lawsuit and also if you ever fight again don king will promote you so muhammad ali is in such bad shape physically and financially he's like fuck it i need the 50k i'll take it Jesus wow right dude so he leaves 1.15 million on the table. <clears throat> Could you imagine, dude, if GoFundMe was around back then, Muhammad Ali, we would have made him right. We would have made him right. Damn, that is fucking crazy. Yeah, left that much money on the table, man. But God, how was he that financially uh, bad at that time? I don't know because he never struck me as like flashy in the sense of right. having things yeah. like he was flashy in the sense of like wanting attention yeah hmm. but i don't know man i think well, he it, lived for another what i don't know years when almost? he died yeah but i was doing jokes about him when i was starting in comedy and he was <laughs> pretty with us? Up. yeah uh, yeah <laughs> in body <laughs> but i mentioned in uh, 1984 he dips his uh he dips his little tootsies into the music ring and he starts promoting music and there's no bigger act in the world at this time than Michael Jackson. But that's wow. like a one and done venture. So he's like, All right, fuck it. I'm gonna fucking focus on boxing here. Goes back into boxing. Yeah. He he anybody who was anybody in the eighties and nineties seventies, eighties and nineties, he was the promoter for. Dude, I I can't even imagine too. Like when he jumped over to music, he must have realized like, wow, the overhead for music, like you have to pay the the road crew, the product, like just the production itself. There's so many different costs that go into yeah. it. Whereas boxing, you're paying like for like what the rental, the boxing federation, then the fighters, and that's it. But yeah. even Serge, like the, the, I didn't know this until I looked into this this week. But everything yeah. from like the concessions, the promoter has a say in. Oh wow! So it's still a, a massive undertaking, but at the same time, I think. I would think that when you're touring, it's much different because with boxing, it's it's a one and done, and then right. you move yeah. on to the next fucking thing. But well, in his prime, how many uh, fights a year would he be promoting? Is it like one a month, or is it like that's one a great a, question? Or a year or something like Dude, that? There was so every fighter that I saw that he had, he was the promoter for, was somebody that that had a fucking massive following and massive amounts of success. So during the 70s, 80s, and 90s, like, he was the guy. There were two. It was he and a guy named Bob Arum who ran, who still, who was still active, and he still promotes massive fights, and he's fucking 90. He runs top rank boxing, which yeah. you probably heard of. Yeah. But, you know, Don King kind of peters out toward the end, but Bob Arum has been going strong for fucking decades now. But they were the two main guys, whereas now I think it's like Bob Arum, uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Mm -hmm. Now, as a, a fight promoter, I don't know anything about boxing. Like, is he responsible for making boxers big names? Is he like a guy that, like, finds people at, like, lower card levels and shit and then says, I can get you, a like, he's going to be a star. I can get him on pay-per-view or whatever. Yeah, that's often how it works. And right. I think that's how 
that's where the predatory predatory element comes in where like they'll see somebody be like, all right, this guy is going to be somebody with a little bit of money behind him and, and I can make a, a lot of fucking money out of yeah. it. Yeah. Dude, there's some there's there's a guy that actually um our friend Eric Todd runs shows in uh, Bristol. Yeah. Out of I think it's the son of this guy, uh, Tim Witherspoon, who was a heavyweight champion. Yeah. And I think his son, who was also a boxer, I think it's his gym in Bristol. Okay. That they now host comedy shows out of the fucking gym. Nice. But I Don think, King I, think I did that show in the in the boxing ring yeah. and everything like that. It's wild. But yeah. Don King used to was the promoter for Tim Witherspoon. And again, wow. a common theme. It's like all these guys, like they notice that like I'm getting a little bit of money for a massive amount of work. Yeah. Like there was one uh, one of his title fights, Tim Witherspoon said he was expecting mid six figures and the night of the fight he got a check for ten grand. Jesus. And the whole thing sounds slimy. The way they get paid too, they get paid like But it's in the contract that they signed. It's just like hidden in there. Yeah, and like Don King will hit him with like an itemized uh fucking expense sheet. Of course. It'll be like like towels was like a big expense that oh he would pay. Towels, towels were like eighty thousand dollars that he would charge them for. Towels. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. I made these dude. myself. <laughs> but dude, the whole thing is fucking slimy because accent. like they'll they'll pay them at, they'll pay everybody out. After yeah. the fight's over, like promoters will be sitting in the fucking hallway, like writing out checks to people. Uh-huh. Like they'll get, they'll figure out like what the what the um, gate is, mm-hmm. and then they'll just start fucking writing checks from there. When did his career start to decline? What after uh, he had um, Tommy the Machine Gun fight Rocky? Was it that one? I, I think AIDS pushed everybody away, Jake. <laughs> Damn it! But uh, I was to, hoping you wouldn't go. <laughs> to seriously answer your question. I think um, all the drama with Tyson really fucking... It hurt him. It really hurt him badly. Yeah. Now, Tyson is what comes up next. So Tyson he gains massive popularity in the mid-80s into early 90s. With, while being uh, affiliated with Don King? Yes. Or yeah. before? Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, he brought... He brought. He found him, right? He plucked like, him from well, he was like, obscurity. All right, so he was... Um, I think Don King knew Tyson's trainer, who was a little old guy named Customato. And I think at that point, he was able to work his way in. And Tyson was just destroying everybody who came in his path. And Tyson became Dude. a pretty big name pretty early on. Insane. I went to, I think it was uh, New Year's Day. They'd ran like a, a marathon of Tyson's fights. Guy was incredible. Yeah. Like, I remember him existing as a kid, but like, I didn't know any better. Right, but, yeah. Like, going back and watching his fights versus like Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember that was huge like 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. Doesn't even hold a candle to what Tyson was in going to do. Yeah, yeah, it was wild. Yeah. But speaking to the level of what a sleazeball Don King is, uh, the first fight between Ali and Frazier, so he was the promoter for the fight, mm-hmm. which meaning he, he had a stake in, in each of the guys fighting. And he came to the fight with Ali in his limo. And when Frazier won the first fight, he left with Frazier. Oh my God. <laughs> Leave with the fighter you came with, you piece of shit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> But, yeah, Mike Tyson is where Don King... Don King's, like, just... He literally is the fucking king of boxing right now. Yeah. And Tyson just can't fucking lose until he comes across Buster Douglas. And then at that point, like, that's when the wheels, like, start to fall off. And when Tyson gets locked up and he goes to prison, I think that's where, you know, shit really hits the fan between he and Don King. And Tyson eventually hits Don King with that $100 million lawsuit. And he settles for $14 million. And there were two separate occasions where Mike Tyson actually beat up Don King. One was outside of a hotel in Los Angeles. He beat beat him the fuck up. Did he like go to find him specifically? Yes, yeah. He knew he was there. Damn. Went to beat his ass. Love it. And then pre-jail or post-jail? I think the first one was pre-jail. Now, the second one, this was early 2000s. They were driving in a limo. They were on 95, going from uh, Fort Lauderdale to Miami. And uh, Tyson, he talked about it on his podcast, Hot Boxing. And he's like, at this point, he's like, he's like, I'm in my cocaine phase. He's like, I have like, I literally have a brick of cocaine on me. And I'm sitting there, I'm listening to Don King talk his shit, and this motherfucker owes me a hundred million dollars. So Don King's sitting in the front seat, and Mike and, and and Mike Mike Tyson's in the back of this limo. And as Don King's talking, Mike Tyson walks up and he kicks him in the head from behind. <laughs> and the driver pulls over because he thinks he could try to stop and he could try to calm Mike Tyson down. But they get out, and Mike Tyson just starts beating his ass outside of the limo. And at this point, uh, they start chasing each other around the limo on 95. 
<laughs> and then Hugh <laughs> Benny Hill music. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually Don King's able to jump in before Tyson gets to him and he locks the doors and he tells the driver to drive off. So now Mike Tyson's on the side of the fucking road. Oh my God. And eventually the police come and Mike Tyson's like, look, I at this time he's like, I have a ton of weed on me and he's like, I have a ton of cocaine and the police come. He's like, I'm fucked. But fortunately, the cop was a Tyson fan. So he's like, where do you need to go, Mike? I'll take you. So he told him the hotel he was staying at. And he took Mike Tyson there. He had it in his pockets. Wow. Like, he had an assistant with him. And I believe he said they had a backpack. They're still serving time for <laughs> <laughs> cocaine possession. <laughs> so as, as his uh, star in boxing starts to fade, Don King still has a lot of influence. He has a lot of influential friends. So he takes his game to politics. And he ends up uh, stumping for uh, George W. Bush, uh, Obama. He endorses. He endorses Hillary Clinton. And then he also endorses. Uh, does anybody who, want him endorsing? <laughs> like Whoever well, wins, he endorses. <laughs> dude, it's funny you mention that because he wanted to speak at the 2016 Republican National Convention. convention. But um, I forget what position he held. But uh, a guy that was connected to Trump named Reince Priebus. Yeah. Maybe he was his uh, chief of staff, maybe. But because Don King had that had that murder slash manslaughter conviction, Reince Priebus is like, look, even by Trump standards, he's like, this is going to look very bad for yeah. us. So you they know, didn't have him speak. And but he gave. I'm sorry, Jake. Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, there's video that you can watch on YouTube of Don King at a black church in it was either Cleveland or New York. But he's there to promote Donald Trump, and behind him you see Trump. You see uh, General Mike Flynn behind him and another guy that I can't remember his name, but he's uh, a guy that was a part of Trump's cabinet. Mike Pence. No, he wasn't. I don't <laughs> no, think he was there. But they show it's it's those guys, and they have uh, these um, these black clergymen behind them in this black church. Nice. Where for some reason they chose to promote Trump, which I, I guess they want to convince people from that area to just say, look, he's one of us. You know, vote for the fucking guy. Yeah. But it quickly devolves into Don King just shouting the N word <laughs> over just and over again. Saying, you know, <laughs> just the N word. Well, he's, he's talking about how he once had a conversation with Michael Jackson and he was saying, look, no matter what you do with yourself, they're going to they're going to view you as a music N word. And if you're doing boxing, if wow. you're a boxer, they're going to view you as a boxing N word. He's Church. giving this as a speech at. Yeah, at a church. In a okay. church. Jesus Christ. But, dude, um, as he's, like, saying the N-word, like, Trump's loving it, and fucking he's general... He's the words. <laughs> dude. <laughs> and and Mike, Mike Flynn is, like, doubled over in laughter at this point, which oh, is, like, dude, yeah. dude, really? dude, it's... He's the one who flipped, right? Like, he, he is, yeah. yeah. That rules for that guy for being a fucking... Regular dude yeah. just enjoying something that's very <laughs> He was funny. having a good time, man. Yeah. Like, dude, yeah. he's, like... It looks like he's going to fall out of his chair at some point. He's having so much fun in this black church hearing the N-word. Oh, my God. His eyes are lit up like he's at a carnival. <laughs> he's got a fucking funnel cake in one hand and a lemonade in the other. So at that, at that point, we're, yeah, as we progress into, like, the 2000s, like, that's kind of what Don King's relegated to. He's, like, kind of just the guy that shows up. And it's like, oh, I know you. And he does, he still manages guys. His last two big fighters were guys named Eric Molina and Adrian Broner. Who's he's they both still fight, but both well past their primes. Yeah. And uh I think it was the the Palm Beach Post, a newspaper, they described uh uh fucking Don King going from the thrill of Manila to the scraps of the craps because he's relegated to like Indian casinos in Florida. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> well, that's what you get when you fuck over every single fucking person you work yeah, with. Yeah, he kind of did like himself he, in. Yeah, he got like me too in boxing, it sounds like. like no, without That's a good way of putting that, yeah. yeah. After there's... two decades of it, yeah. it's like more but I mean, than look that. At, look at Weinstein, right? That was like 20, 30 years of him assaulting people. Right. But I feel like when it's somebody like, oh, you know he fucking does not pay what he says is going to pay or whatever. Yeah. It's like that whispers down the lane. And they're like, oh, well. yeah. But I suppose he was still getting people's name yeah, and the biggest. When I mean, when he's aligned with like Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson, like yeah. anybody who's below that thinks that he can get them to that level, right. you know. Yeah, and you don't even that money yeah. shit just goes in one ear and out yep. the other. Probably you got your eyes focused on the big prize. There were two. Do you remember these guys, uh, Vitali and Vladimir Klitschko? Mm -mm. Yeah, they were two massive heavyweights. 
there was a time where they were looking to possibly get promoted by Don King. And there's a great documentary on HBO called Klitschko. And in it, they talk about the time where they were considering this. And a member of their entourage was filming this interaction where they showed up at Don King's mansion. And Don King becomes aware of the fact that the Klitschko brothers, they love classical music. Don King's got a piano. And he's like, boys, come over here. He's like, I want to play something for you. And they, he sits at the piano. And then you hear this beautiful, I think it's, uh, I think it's Mozart. And uh, you hear this beautiful music. And the Klitschko brothers are talking. They're like, it sounds great. But then we realize it's a self-playing piano. Yes. And he's just sitting there with his hands going. Across. Dude, that's so good. That's so great. He is awesome. There's the, there's the stinker stamp of approval right there. Self-playing piano. Acting has a like tip you. jar in his mansion. And dude, as most horrifically bad people do. <laughs> Don King has a turkey drive around the holidays. Doesn't it seem like every awful person in organized crime yeah. has a turkey drive? That's the step one of rede- redemption is turkey drive. Bro, in two- it's how you cleanse your soul at the end of the year. <laughs> gobble, gobble. In 2011, one of Don King's turkey trucks gets hijacked. Damn. Somebody steals a truck, but then it's found the next day a short distance away when they realize, like, oh, shit, it's just filled with turkeys. I mean, all the turkeys were cooked. When they had- I guess if it's uh, the day after Thanksgiving, it's not really worth as much. <laughs> <laughs> he seemed like he would have been like the perfect character on like a reality celebrity TV show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I guess he was just too old. Like yeah. He was already just 70 by the time that shit was popping. Yeah. He, he would have caused some trouble on like the fucking Apprentice or yeah, something like sure. that. And like you said, 2000s when him and Tyson fought in the limo he had to have been in his 70s then right because if he's 90 something now yeah yeah that's cr- yeah i didn't realize it was that recent tyson was beating up a fucking old man <laughs> <laughs> on the side of you know 95. yeah lethal weapon mike tyson he's still got a ton of money though it's yeah. you know it's a lot of it's his a lot of it's other people's yeah but and, it is his yeah and he had this incredible property in uh i think it was called manalapan florida and it was it was a beachfront property it's, I think Manalapan is, is like, uh, it's just north of Fort Lauderdale. Okay. Beautiful area. His neighbor was Tony Robbins. Hmm. Neighbors awesome. hated him, though, because he- Robbins ha- or, or King? Hated Don King. Okay. One of the reasons was because he had this massive Statue of Liberty statue on the edge of his property. You better call Saul. <laughs> Dude, and it lit up at night. Oh, my God. Dude, and there was actually- there was a there was a motion a, sensor. <laughs> a Haitian immigrant who says that they saw that while they were out in the water. They used it as like a, a guiding beacon? light. Yes. Oh my Shut God. up. <laughs> oh my God. That person, Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> Just no. But dude, aside from that, uh, he had a tennis court built on his grounds for the Williams sisters, Serena and Venus Williams, because he, it was he said it was a dream of his to have them come use his tennis court. Jesus, he he built it on spec, dude. Like it's like. The black field of dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Only he built it, and they never came. They did not come. Yeah, they're like, no, we're not coming to hang out at your fucking place, you weirdo. <laughs> black field of dreams needs to be a thing. <laughs> That's incredible. I've always thought that was he got game until now. That's, hey, my man, you got a new port. <laughs> he also had a boxing glove shaped pool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's it awesome. Is. When he was... um. When he was stumping for Trump, he put up a very funny graphic on a site. He put like a side by side as though he and Trump were going to fight in a boxing match. <laughs> and uh, it listed their characteristics. And under their characteristics, he had hairstyles, one of them. And Trump's was listed as a double comb over. And Don King listed his own hairstyle described as a zapped afro. <laughs> zapped afro. <laughs> and he was asked before how he came up with his signature hairstyle. He's like, you know. Up until a certain point in my life, I always had curly hair. Then one night, my wife woke me up, and she said, Don, your hair is uncurling. And he said, one by one, the curls were becoming straight. This is like a tall tale. Dude, and he says at one point, like, he (laughs) says that he believes his hair stood straight up because it would make it easier for God to pull him up to heaven when his time came. By the hair? Yes. <laughs> shit. That's incredible. It was more like a, a, a Pinocchio situation. I like to think that that's why my hair is thinning. It was because God's been trying to get me for like the last five years. Also, how do you go to be such a big, successful boxing promoter when you start in gambling 
and you have your own gamble house. That's insane. Yeah. I think what a honestly, rise. Yeah. Yeah, seeing these fucking guys, though, I mean. It's like the president of FanDuel, like, <laughs> buying a team. Yeah. And I forgot to mention this, too, but, like, he was he was tied in with John Gotti. And he was actually threatened by John Gotti. Whoa. Because he was always getting in way over his head and in many times regards to, like, borrowing money. So as much money as he was making, he was also, like, into the mafia for a lot. Yeah. Well, that explains why he had to rip so many people off. He was paying people back so they didn't kill him. Wow. One other thing I want to add before we wrap this up is he might even still be wearing it, but in his later years, and I first noticed it when he started campaigning for Trump, he started wearing a denim airbrush jacket, which had his own image airbrushed multiple times on it. And it said uh, across the back, it had his face, and on top of that, it said only in America in the money font. Nice. Damn, dude. Also be dazzled, by the way. Of course. Jesus it Christ. Has to be. Oh, there it is. Look at that. That is insane. Holy shit. Does that come in 3X? <laughs> <laughs> God, that's incredible. He's still going strong, though. He's 91 years young. And I mentioned, like, his, uh, the, the other guy who was uh, a massive promoter during his time, Bob Arum, mm -hmm. is 90, and he's still going. He's still putting on massive fights. Uh, where is uh, Don these days? In Florida. Same place where his compound was with the No, he moved from there. Pool. I think he also spends time in Cleveland as well. But he sold that. There were two properties he had. One he sold for $20 million and another one he sold for 33 Okay. So, I mean, he made a ton of, a ton wow. of cash on those sales. But he, he's refusing to give in, man. He's still booking fights even though they're dog shit fights. <laughs> yeah. He might, he might have actually been the promoter for us beating up John. <laughs> we actually owe him $10,000, Jason. You guys got Crap. Fuck. Yeah, so if you guys could sign up for Patreon right now, we'd really appreciate it. <laughs> but, yeah, still going strong, man. Donald the Kid. Good for Donnie. Was it Donald the Kid? Full name Donald? Like Donald, Donald the, the Kid. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Donald the Kid. He don't play no games. <laughs> And definitely guilty of two murders. That first one, I don't think, was justified either. I don't know. Yeah, like, here's the deal. Back. If a guy comes into your space with a gun and he happens to be distracted with his back to you, I would say that's still self-defense because... You're definitely safe in Florida, Texas. <laughs> <Yeah>. some, some <laughs> Apparently those, Cleveland, too. Yeah, I would, I would imagine. The Rust Belt, baby, come on. The second that one was built on getting sh shooting fellas in the back as they ran away. Hey, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. You look great. You, Thank you. You've continuously come into this this fucking lair with beautiful hats. I love that hat. Oh man, yeah, oh, love this it. is this is a nice one. Thank you. Wish I would have gotten one of those. Yeah, give me that. <laughs> I'm joking. Ah, <laughs> uh, wish I would have ordered that. <laughs> What'd that say? Back fifty. Uh, yeah, actually, I think so. Like I think, yeah. She was like, ah, I'm going to do it. It's the last tour. So they say. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I can't. I wouldn't blame them for doing another one. This No. Hell of a tour. Hell of a turnout. Man. I'm so excited to talk the show. Talk about the show. Yeah. We're going to do a full recap <sighs> for y'all on Patreon. I got so all the videos exciting. from every song. Oh, man. Do you have. I, I actually song? do. Got, nice. Not. Every song, but a decent amount. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to have fun. Yeah, we're going to. That's going to be a good time. And you and me. I got us tickets for Queens of the Stone Age. Nice. Oh, um, uh, uh -oh. Viagra Boys are opening for them. Yes, yes, they I are. I like them a lot. And I also like yeah. Fantagram. They're great. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. Where are they playing? Uh, the Man. The Man. Nice. August uh, 8th, I think, right? Yeah, 8th. Did you get lawn tickets? I don't even know. In a theater, dickhead? Uh, man. Oh wait, no, the man. All right, shit. I'm sorry. I thought the Met. My bad. Take that hat on. Let me, let, let me buckle this Put now. It back on. Get heavier. Put it on heavier than you did. Yeah. So you can catch us at that concert if you're. In. The man's a beautiful venue. Yeah, it that is a fun, fun place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I like doing there? Taking a couple mushrooms before I go in. Ooh. Oh, man. Fun time, or even after I'm in there, and then on the way out, find the Nitrous Mafia. <laughs> a little nightcap. They got a mafia around there. When I saw my morning jacket there a couple years ago, no mafia kidding, was out. Yeah, uh. yeah. Oh man, I was getting one for five. I'm gonna dress everywhere. up like a. I'm gonna dress up like a birthday clown. Should <laughs> <laughs> so they help me out? They're not gonna. No, no, they're not. Nope, not if you <laughs> no. do that. 
That's gonna be fun. I can't wait to go. Yeah. Yeah, we're, uh, we're we're concert buddies now. Hell yeah. Yeah. Go yeah I don't want to. I don't want to. If you want, you want to come? Uh, no. I was just about to say I don't want to encroach, but yes, I, I am gonna come. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> Probably. I'll, I'll get you a ticket. Yeah, I got it. Oh, that'd be no, great. No, no, no. Yep. I gotta make Done sure. Deal. I can you saw go. it here first. Don't buy the ticket yet. Already I bought. Make oh. sure. <laughs> Bleep, bloop, bloop. <laughs> Fuck, that was fast. <laughs> We're gonna have fun. That will be fun. What kind of snacks you want, Jake? Mushrooms. Gonna. It sounds delicious. Concert snacks. You bring snacks inside. Yeah. No, normally. All right. So the Peanuts. way we worked it is. One of us buys tickets and the other is the snack man. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm a, so I'm the snack man for this. And you're gonna bring or you're gonna, from the uh, 90s. He, whatever he wants. I'll, I'll get it. I'm a snack man. Give me a One pretzel, please. A hot dog now. Slice of pizza, please. I went to a Phillies game the other day. We were in a box and they had like a whole thing of hot dogs. And the lady was taking the trays away. So I took a bunch of hot dogs. They, I had to put them in my own buns. Put them in your plastic lined pockets. I, I, yes, I, I wrapped like four of them in foil. In, in, you fucking in, pig. In, I would have oh, done dude, the same thing, dude, bro. Absolutely. I, if in I napkins, go to a free food box, I am eating for at least foil. the next day for free. I still have two bags of peanuts that I'm munching on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, dude, you can take the liquor out of there. Yeah. I brought uh, Shane into a Flyers game once in yeah. my girlfriend's old box. And he rolled out of there with, like, the remaining <laughs> yeah. absolute bottle. Dude, my <laughs> pants, pants. my pants were sliding down because the hot dogs were weighing my shorts down. <laughs> On account of the weight of all the hot dogs I had put in my pocket. Exactly. And, dude, I'm just sitting there in my head saying, I got a pocket, got a pocket full of hot dogs. <laughs> dude, just imagine him walking Whoa. the house. What is that from? <laughs> I got. I think it's like I got a pocket full of sunshine or something like that. Yeah, some some lady song that I just rock out on. Just just imagine like you hear you hear Jake come in the house. His wife's like sleepy eyed, <laughs> looking to make sure it's him. And she looks over. He's normally taking his wallet out of his pockets, but instead he's just pulling out eight fucking hot dogs. <laughs> They're still linked. <laughs> like a clown rope. I should not have put mustard and ketchup on these first. <laughs> They're all wrapped well, in napkins strategically. There you go. Pocket full of sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> Tasha Beddingfield. Jake, you got to relish those moments. <laughs> um, I found a new hot dog place five minutes from here. A new one? They have a um, celebrity death pool. Oh, that's, that's right. That's great. Yeah, Did somebody just win? Yeah, you uh, sent us a picture, right? Uh, Silvio Berlusconi. That's who died. Who was it? Yeah, Italian. I think he was a Italian prime minister. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was on somebody's death pool. Jesus Christ! Yeah, he's a. Uh, they had. I mean, everyone. They had everybody that you could possibly think. You're of. already mad. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> God damn! Yeah. I think the rules are you had to be sixty and over. Nice. <laughs> nice. They yeah, gotta yeah. have morals. Keeping it on the the slightly less evil side of the spectrum. Oh, dude, who you know who died. The other day, Alan Arkin. I know, I saw. What a bummer. Oh, yeah. I just found that out today. Oh, like, my God. How did I miss this? You got to watch World News Tonight with yeah. David Muir every night to get your celebrity death news. I need to figure it out because, I mean, I got hooked on the White House cocaine thing. I was just oh, going down really? a rabbit hole that way, and that's when I saw the Alan Arkin thing. I was like, oh, man. Did you check out the Hunter Biden website picks yet? No. Laptop picks yet? I only saw, I guess, just like screenshots of like videos. Yeah. Is it bad? Is yeah. bad? Do you, but you, do you mean cool? <laughs> yeah, bad. That's <laughs> eating through yeah. the yeah. desert <laughs> while you smoke crack. Actually, no, he was smoking crack while driving in DC. And his laptop was open and took pictures of himself. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know he, what no, happened. No, no, he just had these. He's taking selfies. He, he put them on his hard drive. Oh, yeah, he, he stopped the pose in front of the fucking Washington Monument, Nick, and he sat in fucking Lincoln's lap. I get it. If I dig out crack. Crack pipe in hand. I would do that. I do that with cigars. So I get it. If you had like cool crack and stuff like that. John, you've seen the pictures, right? right? Yeah. Okay, going my, 172 my in the night desert. Photo. Oh, yeah. That rules. Yeah. I got my that's Suge Knight photo. That's what you put up when your wife leaves you. And you say like a lone wolf, although not ideal, is much stronger in a pack. He is well prepared to survive on his own. Please come back. Yeah. Well, it rhymes. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, man. I've been a lone wolf. Damn. Who's who's pack left him because he was drinking too much? You left the pack to go stay in a motel. <laughs> <laughs> I do relieve my pack sometimes. <laughs> you I, here's the deal. The sometimes you gotta wander straight from yeah. the back. Every yeah, you on Wolfsburger. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes I would leave the pack 
and go places just to make sure it was safe in those places if I chose to bring my pack there. Yeah, you got to do recon. Like yeah. Anywhere you might take them, yeah. you got to check it out first. Yeah. A little Solo, recon. long yeah. weekend. I'm doing wolf recon, baby. Green in the bank account. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, doing 172 in the desert, that's pretty cool. Those fucking roads are straight as a goddamn arrow. I did 120 in a fucking minivan, dude. I know, it's so fast. Yeah, that's awesome. Dude, that's... I, got, I got two tickets when my wife and I went out to Ohio last month to go see Deftones and Foo Fighters. Mm-hmm. Both times, 92 miles an hour. And I got, Is that what you had your fucking no? Control set to? I think that's just where yeah. my foot was comfortable. <laughs> and the first cop was, I mean, they were both fairly decent. The first cop was just super nice. He's like, yeah, man, you just can't do that. He's like, he's like, just set it at 80. Nobody's going to stop you. Was it 65 speed limit? Probably. Yeah, probably. I think they were both in PA. I usually do 79 just in case the one fucking dickhead. Yeah. That's, that is cool that a cop said, just do 80. No one's I know. Yeah, he was that. super chill. Yeah. The next. The lady cop, uh, she was still pretty cool, but I thought about stealing her gun. <laughs> Don't you want to do that anytime you get lady cop? You just would be like, I bet I can wrestle that gun away from you. <laughs> it's hard to get out. I've tried. <laughs> Honestly, I think they should give lady caps two guns because you're going to take one. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, honestly, just always hold the one. Yeah. <laughs> they should have, like, one in their brim. Like Edward, Edward Forty's hands, the guns on their hands. <laughs> Wait, I didn't think you had to work today. <laughs> I just can't do it again tomorrow. I'm off today. Yeah, one in each hand, one on each foot. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, all things told, like, you know, gave me a ticket, let me get on my way. And yeah. I was speeding the rest of the way to Ohio, baby. Do they like double? You? Do they see that you already had one that day and say, "Oh, that's a double infraction"? Or something? they were both the same. I think they were both like one hundred and sixty bucks. Yeah, that game fucking sucks. Yeah, it's. Do you get like a bunch of um, letters from Cleveland lawyers to go to court on your behalf or something? No, I got one from court last week. I didn't even open it yet because bad boy. Is it for <laughs> no, the no. speeding ticket? I hope. Yeah, I mean, you'll just have to pay somebody. <laughs> yeah, Unless they found yeah. the bodies. <laughs> yeah, right. I had to do that yeah. in North Carolina. You just pay a lawyer fucking an extra 75 bucks, and I think that's all these guys do all day. They just go to court yeah. on behalf of people. Yeah. 75 yeah. bucks a pop minute a fucking case, probably. Yeah. I should probably open it this weekend and yeah. try to yeah, do that. Yeah, you know, sometime this summer. I know, man. I, 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 I got to be honest with you, though. I've, I've never been arrested, and I kind of want to. Dude, and you don't want to go for... Yeah, I do want to go for tickets. I don't want to go for killing my family. That'll be sick, dude. We'll take a little trip to Cleveland. Maybe <laughs> yeah, we'll come see me. Hilarities, and then they'll be waiting for you when we yeah. get off the plane. Yeah. Jeff, can we record the podcast through the plate glass uh, visitation <laughs> windows? <laughs> but yeah, I'd much rather go for tickets than for something serious. And I think I just said killing my family because I'm angry at them <laughs> for not doing the dishes earlier and not fucking vacuuming and doing the litter, which I'm still angry about. But... I'll, I'll do the litter for you, Mike. No, that's no. a lie. I'm not. I'm gonna shit in the box and then walk out. <laughs> but yeah, I'll get that shit taken care of. Ohio was nice though. <laughs> Ninety two. You were really fucking out there, man. Yeah, I was cooking. Passing everybody in the left lane. Yeah, I was cooking, man. I actually, I, I mean, I would, I would go that fast to begin with, but also the GPS rerouted me toward Pittsburgh, which sent me like an hour out of the way. Like I got off at a rest stop and it. Directed me toward Pittsburgh. And then... Your phone just takes you to hot dog places along the way. I wouldn't doubt it, man. <laughs> but yeah, I think I, I kind of had the hot foot because yeah. I was running running behind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Had, to, had to catch up some time. Mm-hmm. Really had to move. It's a good lineup, too, you saw. Yeah, it was a great show. Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of fun, man. I, I love concerts, man. It, it's been a while. Since I could hold my head up high. <laughs> oh, man. It's been a while. We're actually going to see Stained in a couple weeks. They're at that show? The the Godsmack show? 29th, yeah. Oh, my oh, God. Stained and Godsmack. John, you going to worm your way into that one, too? Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know what? No. Oh, dude, I had something for you. Not, I fa- I'm not going to any concerts with you. I found a, a signature from Robbie Merrill, the bass player from Godsmack. I met him at a monster truck event. <laughs> what, what fucking trash can did you find that in? <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere dug in my parents' basement. I found it on the back of a Monster Jam uh, coupon. He wrote, Jake, smack it, Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm the newest yeah. Godsmack fan. <laughs> yeah. That's great, dude. God bless you. 
All right, boys. Anything you want to add before we go? No, thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for teaching us about Don King, Mike. I'm yeah. happy to do it, man. He's a, I, I like him. Uh, I don't. I certainly don't hate him. I mean, yeah. Wouldn't give him any of my money, but yeah. man, nah, what man. a fun story. Dude, anybody <laughs> that has a massive Statue of Liberty in their backyard facing the ocean that builds a tennis court for the Williams sisters, wears a denim jacket with his image airbrushed on it, mm-hmm. and is willing to steal from Mike Tyson is okay in my book. Yeah. <laughs> It's all the notes that I always hear you talk about. <laughs> oh, dude, he fuck. What did he say? No, oh, when he attended the wedding of Trump and Melania, he was uh, uh, he gave a speech there and he described uh, their wedding as a spontaneous combustion of love. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Jesus Christ, it's disgusting, dude. man. A spontaneous combustion of love. God damn. Anything you want to promote? No, I'm just thinking of what you would do, Mike, with that money. If you had Don King money, mm. would you build like a gymnastic, like a, a saddle horse out there for the 96 team to come back, <laughs> come to your house? <laughs> no. Do a little balance. I'm out of my gymnastics phase. I'll tell you one thing. This is kind of embarrassing. I don't believe it one bit. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying you're out of it. I know you're still in it. I, he's, I, a, he's in his lying about being <laughs> out of yeah. his <laughs> gymnastics phase era. <laughs> Whatever he lies about it. In his, if you look in his eyes when he lies, his eyes are going like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm totally out of my gymnastics there. <laughs> no, but there there is a hot lady gymnast right now that I see constantly, and I'm just like, eh. <laughs> she had an OnlyFans. Where do you see her constantly? On Instagram. I hope she's of age. I don't know who this. Yeah, yeah. Is I age. think she's like 23. Jesus, but thank God. That's what I'm saying, Jake. I'm I'm out of that phase. Yes. And for the record, when I was in the women's gymnastics, I was also you were, underage. Yes, you were. It, yeah, it wasn't a creepy thing. It, mm. it was, I mean, it kind of. Just an embarrassing thing. Yes, yeah, more embarrassing. <laughs> uh, what did I want to add? No, but no, Mike, nothing to promote. Okay, yes. <laughs> I'm fighting Mike Tyson next week at, uh, at Jester Castle on Market Street in Philadelphia. And I'll be fighting Cecily Tyson in the parking lot. <laughs> but if you're watching this on Patreon, thank Cecily you. Cecily Tynan. Good thing he's already wearing that fucking hat. Uh, one Cecily Tynan that I want to add before we go is... <laughs> There's always one at the end of the show. <laughs> My dad is obsessed with 6ABC weather lady Cecily Tynan. He loves her so much. And there was a time in the mid-2000s where she was out with an unspecified medical issue, and they said that, you know, they're, they're sending well wishes to Cecily Tynan mm-hmm. without specifically saying what was wrong with her. And my dad said, oh, what is it, Cecily? Do you need me to donate an organ? I'll do it. My, me, mind you, my dad is yelling this at the TV. Mm-hmm. And my mom's an in the organ? Ki- oh, yeah, my mom's in the kitchen preparing dinner, and she says, why don't you donate the one that doesn't work anymore? Oh, no! <laughs> Damn. She was frying up a steak and his ass. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you for becoming a patron. It's because of you that we can afford helmets and pudding nowadays. <laughs> if you're watching this for free, consider supporting us by joining our Patreon, which is which you can do by going to patreon.com slash little stinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. All kinds of fun shit every month. You get the episodes a week early. You get an extra episode a month. Um, you're going to get the next movie watch along, which we're about to film Yeah, for uh, one of the greatest, greatest film actors of all time, Arenthal James Simpson. <laughs> we're going to watch Naked Gun and you can watch that with us. <laughs> um, yeah. All the other dumb shit that we do, you get access to by becoming a Patreon patron. That's $4 a month or 40 bucks for the year. Do that at patreon.com slash little stinkers. And we also got a great trip coming up in October. We're heading out to the West coast and we're going to, explore uh nevada and california and who knows where else that'll take us oh, man <laughs> i might not come back here that would be a fun place to stay mm-hmm. i can't wait i love it out there i can't wait i can't wait too buddy yeah, but thank yeah. you everybody love you guys and we'll see you next time later there's so much fucked up shit to get into Thank you.